Welcome to Packmates, a podcast about Magic the Gathering Limited, where we take a dive into the current limited format. The Packmates are a group of friendly card sharks that love drafting, hanging out, and going to FNM. Don't forget to check out our socials and join the Discord. Links are in the description. I'm Ryan. I'm the Roby. Agro <laughs> expert. The Dirtle expert. Dirtling. And, and, and we are the Packmates. This week. <laughs> and. <laughs> and, yeah, no, Andrew. <laughs> and Drew's not here. Yeah, rest in peace. <laughs> yeah, COVID almost and, got uh, the boy. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so, uh, why don't you? So, uh, I think we're gonna go over deck. <laughs> so, I think we're gonna go over deck text first. Uh, how was your deck, Ryan? Uh, fine, just fine, I guess. Like, <laughs> not great. <laughs> Went two and Amen. one. Uh. About feel like uh, every other deck I've ever played in this set. Nothing felt good. It all felt fine. Nothing felt too terribly bad. Uh, red blue spells kind of with some uh, tempo-ish creatures. Um, yep. Had a bunch of two drops creatures. Erebor Flamesmith was pretty good in the deck. It was the two one that pings for one whenever you cast in some sorcery. Uh, Battle scarred goblin. It's fine. Olagai Crusher is actually pretty good. That's the 4-4 Trample that can't block unless you control, like, an army or a goblin or something. Yeah. Goblin or orc. Um, And then three smooth- Soothing of Smeagles and two Birthday Escapes and, yeah, just a bunch of random stuff all kind of cobbled together. Yeah. Uh, what about that display of power? Oh, I yeah. It was, uh, incredible. It was a game-winning bomb. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Display of powers, of course. I, I'm gonna, I I'm gonna read it for those of you at home that don't know what it does, because you probably never, you've seen never it played it ever. Because it's terrible. Uh, it's one double red for an instant. This spell can't be copied. Copy any number of target instant and or sorcery spells. You may choose new targets for the copies. Um, so yeah, that was uh, oftentimes copied as soothing a Smeagol and some other spell. One time it was like uh, soothing a Smeagol and a uh, 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 rally at the Hornberg. yeah, rally at Hornberg. Um, which you know, four haste and returning two creatures and the ring tempted me twice turned out to be pretty good. Um, the card is like kind of bad. I just put it in there for like a science experiment just to just to see if I could squeeze the most out of it. And there's there's ever a deck that could like squeeze some juice out of it. It's like the deck with three smoothings and two birthday escapes, right? Like soothing and smeagles. So, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I saw, I'm not sold at all. Yeah, like it's kind of it's kind of in there to be like uh, a crutch since I have no removal too. Like yeah. I just I'm gonna copy my opponent's removal, but that never happened. It was just me double bouncing things most of the time. It also works with improvised club too, right? Yeah, yeah, improvised club club is sick. Or like the you know discard make a one one draw two would have been yep. sick to copy with it. Oh um, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but how come you don't have any of those, Ryan? <laughs> I just didn't, man. Just didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a tough table, tough table, but end up losing the lot in the championship. Um, that performed uh, honestly out of its weight class. Like, I feel like I had no business being two and one, but we got there. So yeah, yeah, fun times. I don't know about that treason of Isengard. Like this is like really not the deck for it, right? Um, yeah, like it was not great. It wasn't terrible though. Like just like amassing two. Yeah, I'm amassing two and optionally putting something on top of my deck, right? Like, I don't have to put something on top of my deck. Like, but if, like, it's so bad if you don't, right? It's like, yeah. sometimes you have to, right? Like, I've definitely just cast it for nothing just to get a 2 2, but. Like, Soothing was fine to put on top of my deck. Like, Ring tempts me and a huge tempo yeah. game. Like, it's fine. How often did you get to four in this deck? Uh, Only when I cast Display of Power, so like twice. Oh, yeah. So yeah, you're not was... really relying on it at all. You're trying to beat him with like crushers. I've never played a version of this deck by like this. This is the um, Ryan so... version of the blue yeah, deck. Has has like... Way too many creatures. Yeah, <laughs> like it them. plays a lot of like the weird Blood. bad creatures <laughs> that uh, I like try to steer away from. Like I don't try to play the goblins ever. Yeah, like I think they're fine. They're they're, they're like you have right to have there. them if you're gonna put crushers in your deck, right? Well, the whole idea of the deck, nah, because I'm not blocking. Like, if I'm blocking, I'm losing, right? Like, I don't care about blocking. The whole idea of the deck is to just get some tempo and bounce stuff and, like, 
rain tempts me to two where I can maintain the tempo. And if the rain's going to tempt me, I need bodies out that can take advantage of me being tempted, right? That's kind of my thought process when building the deck. So if, yeah. with that being said, I just put some, you know, random two drop bodies in there and that happened to be a bunch of battle scarred goblins. Yeah. Yeah. I um, don't know. <laughs> yeah. Ring got the two, like, like almost every game though. Like it was, it was getting there quite a bit. And then, yeah. Mouth of Sauron at the, at the top with my, Two ways to make treasure. Oh, what, was the biggest, what was the biggest uh, amount of Sauron you got? Like a 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, I, you're, I like, only cast you're it that's once. not doing that that hard, right? I only, yeah, I only cast it once. It was, it was fine. Like, it wasn't amazing. It was fine. The problem was, is the Bath Song and Mouth of Sauron do not work well together. Um, The Bath Song shuffles uh, a lot of stuff back do. in my head. They do work well together, but not like the way that you're trying to do it. You're trying to recycle your spells, right? Right. I'm trying to make my deck like to where I'm hitting less land drops, right? With the Bath Song. Yeah, but like what you need to be using Bath Song to recycle is the Mouth of Sauron's and specifically uh, Gandalf Sanctions, right? Like that. that's what why Bath Song is so good. Yeah, that makes sense, but or, I did have any good stuff to recycle bringing really. back more bath songs is another bomb thing to do yeah yeah yep. but yeah and then eomer marshall of rohan on four four haste on four to like really pressure like it's mostly just get pressure bounce a dude to take an extra turn and then hope that that's good enough and sometimes it was and sometimes it wasn't yeah but yep. yeah lost to five color amazing good stuff that played aragon on four and the white blue dude that gives any creature protection from whatever he wants uh, on two. That Pippin, that, that yeah. like two is so annoying. Yeah, it's so good. It's just so good. Genuinely super annoying. Yep. Yeah. I just lost. Yeah. The deck was really good. He had a ton of fixing. Like he never stumbled and he was five colors and just bodied everybody. His deck, he had three build the ponies, which I can like never be a uh, build the pony. Like. <laughs> So yeah. that's that's really good. Red blue really struggles against do nothing one force tokens. <laughs> one force. They have one force too. Well, not yeah. yeah, actually yes, because like <laughs> I can't beat a one four in my deck. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us about yours. Yep. So uh I was right next to Ryan <laughs> and I was also in red blue, which should let you know why both our decks are kind of mid <laughs> like so i ended up playing red blue my only real win con was like rally at the hornberg <laughs> like realistically like it's looking real rough like i have an elrond which was really good with rally at the hornberg and i have like a couple little interaction spells and basically i was just trying to tempt a four and dome for four every turn with one once but yeah i lost game one i kind of just threw it away though <laughs> like like i lost game one with like two egregious mistakes and uh ended up going 2-1 but yeah just around into rally at the hornberg basic red blue stuff cool. no win cons <laughs> i want to hear more about these egregious mistakes so i played a one of my secret weapons that i don't have on the list of five cards i'm supposed to talk about is uh dreadful as the storm which is the uh, three mana make something a five five tempt the ring so i made a mistake where i attacked with a creature that was gonna die even if i played it uh give something plus five or make something a five five because i thought that tempting the ring to three would make them have to sacrifice all their creatures that blocked it which it doesn't work that way yeah they have to block it after before three. Yeah, yeah yeah which that threw it away and then uh -huh. uh, the bane of my existence in this format in real life paper magic is uh sacrifice stuff i never i just always forget about it and my opponent had a grima worm tongue and i played a fear fire foes targeting their four four and they just sacked it and made a two two <laughs> and like and then it was just game. Like, I literally just lost because of that mistake. But, yeah, I always forget about, like, sack outlets. And I need to kill them first and stuff. But, yeah, I just yeah. threw it away. I didn't yep. want it anyways. Right. You didn't deserve it. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know you didn't deserve it. No. Neither did I. Yeah, uh, deck was mid, like no win cons it was whatever my last game was against like a green white deck which uh took like 45 minutes to play once i had to do like 
at least 9,000 damage to them. <laughs> like, I was, yeah. I had like four cards left in my library. Every uh, card of that dude's deck was just making food. Yeah. Like, he was never going to kill me, but I was going to mill myself out. <laughs> like, like I was going to mill myself out and die, for sure. But Do you think yeah. it's worth it to play two Lorien Revealed? That's the five mana bounce two? Bounce no, two dudes. that is the five mana draw three. Oh, you're right. That is the five mana Island draw Island Cycler, yes. That card's good. My bad. It is very, very good, yeah. What the am I thinking mana, of? The Horses of yes, the horses. or whatever. Do you I think would it's probably, worth it to play two yeah, of those? I would, yeah. I, I think stuff. they're pretty good, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, a two like, for one, right? Like, it's good. kind of like you have a very loose. It's definition. at least a one for one because you're always hitting like a like a big giant mass token with it, right? Yeah, you have a very loose definition of two for ones, but yeah, sometimes it's a maybe. scry one too. That's like almost a two and a half for one. Yeah, like, sure. Scry one is a half. I don't. You're just really <laughs> stretching. You're just really stretching. Elrond is busted with rally at the hornberg though yeah i'm sure that I, I recognize good. that in the draft and i took elrond over something probably a little better just because i already had three rallies like yeah but yeah like just tempting the ring was pretty good yep but yep that's all i got i'm tired of this format Me too. <laughs> so Me it leads too. us to our next uh <laughs> talking point we're just gonna do a brief overview of our thoughts and feelings on this format Right, so Ryan, uh, what's your thoughts and feelings? How do let you? Let me feel? just start this with a disclaimer. If you really love this, you can feel free to tune just out. Just skip, skip, yeah, skip to this part. The next part, yeah. Which, yeah. Well, this actually, part. skip that next part. Skip to the book review. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like we don't got nothing for you except hot takes on the the book reviews. But I just like it's always formats like this that I hate the most, where they just feel like the most unbalanced. And it yeah. feels like either you get the deck that's like the best, like red black or like some version of basically black X, right? Like, no, and you get like enough pieces X, of removal. It's not black green, right? Like, I mean, yeah, black green's the worst of that, but like black red, black blue, black white, or red, like red blue, right? It's red black, really. Red white's fine too. But anyway, like you get red or black, you get strong red or black. Yeah. Or you don't. Yeah. If you don't, yeah. it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be yeah. a tough day. And you can win without those colors, but not very often. And like you're gonna have to get kind of lucky to win a whole, you know, trophy without one of those two colors. It feels different from like AFR was kind of the same way, but like it was like even more egregious, right? Like <laughs> red black was like actually the only viable deck. Yeah, but, but like, like that was kind of fun support like four to five players in a pod yeah and red black here can support like two players in a pod maybe and right? like once it becomes more than two players like everyone has horrible decks one person has a fine deck and everyone else is terrible yeah like the the person that's just up, the most upstream they got the most murders they got the most decent removal yeah. you know they have a fine deck and everyone else is just like struggling yeah, like the, everyone else can beat like you know a lot of other color pairs, but they can never beat that guy, right? Like, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It is. Yeah, was, I'm, I'm over it. I'm getting tired of it. Like, it might be the only time where it's the first time a quick draft set has come onto arena, like for the very first time, and I'm tired of it before it ends. <laughs> but yeah. like, I'm, I'm waiting for it to, to like rotate, yeah. right? Like. Which has never happened ever in like the first two weeks, which is usually how long they have their quick draft sets up. Yeah. But yeah, I'm I I want something else. I, want I blame else. some of mine on my vacation too. Like I just feel like super behind everyone else, like behind the curve, because I took a vacation to do water slides or whatever. And uh, that's a year. That's is your, your well, long lost family. Uh, do water slides, and uh, I just like didn't play magic, and so like now I'm just like quite a bit behind everywhere where everyone else is, and like it's not fun enough to make me even want to catch up, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like there were so many cool things I was like looking forward to, like I was looking forward to like doing the food deck and doing the elves deck and like doing the flyers deck, and like none of it works. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it feels like it. Yeah, I mean, like it's I'm like, sure it can be done. But like, it would take a dream run, right? Like, 
Yeah. And like know. you'd go like seven two. <laughs> like, yeah, maybe. Or like five and three. And which we've all gotten with like really mid red blue or like red black decks. Like yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. I'm I'm t- I'm ready for the next one. Yep. And so with that being said, you know, I'm still gonna go to F and M's, but I think I'm gonna kinda take a break. Yeah. Maybe not grind uh, as hard as I normally would. Yeah. I've been doing around three to four drafts a day the last like couple days though i've like been on one deck <laughs> one, one, one draft because i'm uh, yeah. dreading playing it right <laughs> like like i just don't even i'm, I'm slowly <laughs> getting burnt out on this set like, i've been on one deck that i'm hoping to get the three wins for like five days and i'm just like <laughs> not gonna get there <laughs> not gonna Dude, get there so like ever since the beginning of this format like i will draft a deck and i will need a break after drafting it because i'm like this deck is garbage and then i'll play it and end up like trophying with it but like especially later in this format i'm just i'm so over it playing each deck like after i draft it, i'm just like dreading playing the games <laughs> yeah yeah it's just not that fun but you know what is fun coming out thursday or the, the 20th what, what will is be that after mean? it'll be the day that this is out league of legends 2v2 v2 v2 v2s four team free for all 2 v2s i'm super excited for that i'm playing on the pbe if anybody wants to play hit me up it's going to be lots of fun you know what else is really fun Ryan? what's uh, that street fighter 6 <laughs> rashid's about to come out and he's going to break Ooh. the game Ooh. And everyone's super mad because he's he's like maybe bottom three. Uh, Oh, no. Uh, I don't know. He's like bottom three, too, because like actually no one plays him. Like I've only ran into like maybe two Dalsums in ranked. I probably played like, I don't know, a shit ton of ranked. Like, <laughs> like I don't know. I have like 200 hours in Street Fighter 6 already. So you can but Iron Giant, Dalsim? Probably. Like, I don't know how to deal with them, but I beat him every time. But he, I don't know. I don't know if he's actually good. But everyone's mad about Rashid because Evo's coming up. And I don't know if you know this, Ryan. But, like, Street Fighter Six has been, like, breaking all the records at, like, EVO for, like, attendance. Oh, really? Yeah, there's, like, 8,000 people signed up to play Street Fighter Six. Oh, yeah. Like, 80%, like, the lowest stat that they have per game, like, the EVO ended up, like, posting this chart of, like, uh, people who have signed up for more than one event. And, like, every game, every game at EVO, 50% of the players at the very bottom of this chart have signed up to play Street Fighter VI, too. But, and at the top, like, the top games, it's, like, 80% of the players have signed up to play Street Fighter VI, too. So everyone else has just been playing Street Fighter Six, and uh, yeah. everyone's mad because Rashid's going to come out like a week before you go and break the game, <laughs> which I'm excited for. Do you get do you get banned in competitive? No, no, not in like Street Fighter because it's like you have your mains, right? Like you can't ban someone's main. <laughs> like, like, I mean, a lot of games so have mains bad. and they still get banned. Yeah, but that's different. That's like team games, right? Like you can't like ban someone in a one v one. Picking their character. Yeah, just get better right. at more than one character, right? Like, no, nah, I don't know. Stupid. It's cooler if you only have one main. You think right? so? Yeah, because then you get way better. Because, like, if you're juggling characters, you'll never be as good with one character if you just focus on that one character, yeah. right? Don't you think? Maybe. I mean, I think you need to like play them all to learn how they work and like. Get should out. we get? Should we get bands and draft? <laughs> That would be neat. That would be a neat. <laughs> that would be really funny. <laughs> like, like preemptive uh, bands. You you like look at each person's draft pool, and you get to pick three bands. You get to go through their <laughs> deck at the beginning, and just like, you can't <laughs> play these three cards. <laughs> like well, we'll have to three do that key pieces week. of their deck. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can't play the horn. You can't play Anduril. <laughs> like, okay. I guess I just three lose bands. them. <laughs> I'm banning three swamps. <laughs> I I can think of times where that would be like the most advantageous thing in the world for me. Yeah. Uh, like like definitely there's like it's it really depends because it's just like punishing people for getting bombs. 
<laughs> like yeah we should be we should have a common ban list for drafts <laughs> like if you open that card too bad you just can't play it like <laughs> but it can only be comments well what would be the bans in this uh, uh, mur- murder what, whatever it's called okay you get murder i would say a rally at the hornberg yeah i think that's worse than murder but i could be wrong yeah it's got a way higher win rate it's got a higher win rate oh yeah it's got, like a, it's got like a, it's got like over sixty percent opening. Well, hand well rate. what? Which win rate are we talking about here? What are we talking about? Opening hand win rate. Opening hand win rate. Seventeen win. Rally has a sixty-one point eight opening hand win rate, and claim has a fifty-nine point six. So they're close. Yep. Yeah. Which uh, yeah. a sixty-one point eight win rate on a common. What was inspiring no. Overseer? Like, ah, uh, we can look, actually. What streets is his name? SNC. Oh, yeah. Uh... 62. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so basically so the same. 61.8 <laughs> yeah. and 62. Like, basically, Rally Hornberg is inspiring Overseer. 62. Uh, 62, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 61.8 it is very close, right? Yeah. <laughs> Inspiring Overseer was so much better than that, though. <laughs> Jewel Thief also 62. What was its improvement? How is Jewel Thief's improvement when drawn so much higher than Inspiring Overseers? It's not. It's like double. I see it as lower. You're looking at Hostile Takeover. Oh, right, Hostile Takeover. Yeah. Whoops. Which, yeah. obviously, that card. <laughs> yeah, that card's a bomb. Yeah. But still, uh, still, uh, same opening hand win rate as inspiring overseer. That's funny. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, what's the what's the last thing we got now, Ryan? What else we got? Book club. <laughs> Yay! Everyone's favorite, back by popular demand. <laughs> popular demand is just Roby saying we got to continue this book club. So, like, I had like three people come up to me at F and M making yeah, fun of me. Yeah, I had people it. telling yeah. me that they liked your taste. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, so uh, definitely, uh, like, I was surprised. I had like some interesting conversations with people about the book, but uh, I definitely made a hor- horrific mistake last week. So apparently, with the audiobook that I was listening to, I didn't actually listen. To all of the Fellowship of the Ring. I only listened to the first half of it. You're like, this book sucks. It's like half a book or something. Yeah. That's how I <laughs> felt. Like, genuinely. But, like, I was like, dang, they added a lot of stuff <laughs> to <laughs> that movie, right? Like, yeah. But, like, apparently... I only read, they cut out a lot of the really, really, really boring stuff in the movie. And so definitely there was a lot of like, uh, the second, the second half kind of picked up a little. Lots of monologues, but uh, more Gandalf, which is better because Gandalf's cool. Yeah, he's basically like Dumbledore. Yeah, like Dumbledore. Yeah, he's a, he's better. The, the King Wizard. Is he better? He's better. He he like dies kind of uh-huh. like he like they they fight the Balrog which is cool yeah. that is cool they go to where is that Moria what, what's that one card Swarm yeah, Moria yeah yeah they go there and they get swarmed by goblins and orcs and stuff because they're trying my, to get out you know who my favorite character is who? Tom Bombadil yeah he is mine too <laughs> yeah. just kidding hate him he is a terrible character so boring <laughs> like like <laughs> i don't think you realize like how much tom bombadil there is apparently like uh i'm on the second i'm actually on the two towers i'm almost through the first book i still have to go through the second one but apparently there's another chapter with him and i'm not looking forward to it <laughs> like because it's starting to get exciting there's starting to be some cool action, and then I'm gonna have to go back to Tom Bombadil's house, which no one cares. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, he's like the equivalent of uh, Bran in Game of Thrones. I've never actually watched Game of Thrones. Uh, basically, he sits there and does nothing, but everyone movie. loves him, right? I don't know. I, like, I refuse to believe that people that actually read this book actually like Tom. No, Bombadil. like in the story, like the, uh, the other characters. Yeah, the other characters like him, but like, yeah. I guess yeah. He does. He does like some stuff. He saves them because he's like a get out of jail free card. Because he's like unkillable and super OP and can just like kill everything. But isn't because he's a good guy. Yeah, he's super boring. But yeah, 
I read the second half of Fellowship of the Ring. It's not as bad. Not just as bad, like well, that first half. That first half is rough, though. I'm not gonna lie, the second half like has pandering. some boring stuff. What? This feels like walking it back and pandering, Roby. No, because that first half, Tom Bombadil still sucks. Don't get me wrong, but it's not as bad because there's more action in the second half. Let me look at the chapters real quick to try and remember. <laughs> yeah, what kind of action are you talking about here? Live action? So, book one. Okay, so the other terrible part of the second the second book, there's one more terrible thing that everyone else was also telling me about was uh, the Council of Elrond is super boring too. But once you get past that, then it's then it's like they're actually like going on the road to solve their uh, little, little their little mission, you know. And then it gets good. But yeah, they end up going to Moria because they have to. I don't remember like. It's like a fight between Dumbledore and Aragorn. Yeah, it's it's cool. I like the I won the second book and it's already getting way better though. Like the second actual book, the the uh, two towers. But yeah, I've definitely uh, heard a lot of the references to the cards so far. Like the uh, fear fire foes. That's in the first book. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Go ahead. I remember in high school I used to trigger my friends by saying it's just the same as Harry Potter and always calling Gandalf Dumbledore. <laughs> Basically, oh, is like you have Harry, which is Frodo. Uh-huh. Which it, I, I'm not the biggest Frodo fanboy. I don't really like him that much. Sam is Ron, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I like Sam way more than I like Frodo, though. Yeah, I like everyone does, right, dude? Yeah, and you know, okay, I think like it isn't because of the book. I think uh, he's so good in the movies, yeah. and it's Rudy, right? And we love yeah. Rudy. Yeah, sure. We love Rudy. Right. <laughs> like, he's basically Rudy in this book, too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, 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 he had a, he's just, like, going on a adventure, and, like, obviously, he's not good enough to, like, be the best in the world, but he just try, right? Yeah. He just try, he stays with his buddy. Yeah. I, gu- I guess his best friend doesn't die in a, in a mining accident <laughs> like, like he doesn't Rudy. <laughs> at the steel mill. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah, while we're at it, uh, next week, Ryan, I'm going to need a review of you of Rudy. A review of Rudy. Are we yeah. just turning it into a books and movies podcast? <laughs> I, I, I think it's fun. I think it's you, fun, but... you guys want to hear a fun fact? I literally turn on the Fellowship of the Ring movie when I can't sleep at night. <laughs> and it funny. works every single time. It's soothing. The first one, the first movie is, it is good. I, I do like the movie. It's the, boring. <laughs> it's so good. The only reason I ever got through it is because my wife would pause it when I fell asleep. And the next night we'd pick up and then get a solid 15 to 30 minutes in. <laughs> <laughs> we did that for like two weeks. That's funny. I got through the fellowship fully. So, what what's your uh, what's your stance? What's your rating on the movies? What do you give them out of ten? Like they're just like a classic, right? It's like where a lot of like modern day fantasy came from, right? Like it's just for the just, movies. I mean, no, like well, okay, let's the, go for the the whole story. The movies are like they're fine. Like yeah, at, well, you know, out of ten. Give me an out of seven. I probably go eight on fellowship nine on two towers and probably either i haven't seen return return of the king in a long time but yeah i rewatched the two towers and it was good and uh i've seen the fellowship of the ring semi recently on an airplane randomly yeah but yeah i'll give you a review of uh oppenheimer and barbie because i'm going to see that this week (laughs) no Actually, I I want to see Oppenheimer, but I do not want to see Barbie. <laughs> I do not. I like actively don't want to see that movie. Wow, I didn't know you were so. Uh, I don't want to see. So I don't right. know. What I didn't know you were is. so right, <laughs> Ruby. I was so con. It's just the conservative in me, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Just a little, just a little hunting bow, bow hunting boy. Okay, see Barbie. Yeah. You never. You won't be caught dead in that movie theater. <laughs> never. <laughs> <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, that's just your racism. I, your so treat. my so my <laughs> girlfriend like was like, okay, so we're gonna go see Barbie next week, and I was like, actively like for the first time in our relationship, 
since we've been dating because I love to watch movies. <laughs> I genuinely love all movies ever. But I was like, no, I'm not going to watch it. You are. <laughs> like, like you are. caught her off guard, Loki. But yeah, yeah, I don't want to see Barbie. <laughs> I genuinely don't. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Is that all we got, Ryan? That's all I got. Get you That's all I got. Yep. All right. Take it easy. I'll try to I'll actually read the two towers for next week. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right.